after a 10-state search of Craigslist and Facebook posts, I finally saw my 1950 Buick Roadmaster. I gassed up in my hometown and headed into Champaign to Rental City to get a car hauler trailer. Started off on a nice trip in Illinois that was decent weather. Ran into some snowier weather in Wisconsin where I finally picked up the car. Got it on the trailer, drove it back, and by 2 o'clock the next morning, the car was in my garage safely. And now the work begins. Well, we got the car home safely. I've got the car in a great shop space here where I can think and plan a little bit and uh, get my thoughts together about where exactly I even want to start um, to try to get some forward momentum going on this car through the winter so that maybe come warmer weather we might actually be out driving it but the more I thought about it there's, there's a lot of steps that I have to get done yet uh, and I've actually started to write this down because I don't think there's any other way that you can attack one of these unless you come up with a plan and start writing some stuff down about what you want to do uh, where you're going to get to and how, how you're going to get there so uh, having a spotter to work on it is great I've got it up on jack stands now so I can get under the car and do a, an inspection and start writing down the things that are right and the things that are wrong uh, and kind of go at my own pace uh, one of the things I think I need to do really quickly here is to be on the safe side is get the car titled I know there's people who have actually bought cars and started restoration work and doing things like that only to find out later they were having real problems finishing the titling with it uh, don't think that'll be the case with this one because I uh, have a clean title to begin with from from uh, the state that I bought it in but uh, nonetheless uh, first things first get the car titled get it in your name and make sure there aren't any issues there and then start pouring your time and money into it uh, there was only one key that came with the car so I've already uh, got a spare key made and if I could put in a plug uh, for uh, key me uh, K-E-Y-M-E, which is an online service that makes, uh, they have kiosks uh, around in different places in the U.S. Uh, and this kiosk was brilliant. I was able to stick the blank, or the, the, the one key that I had left to the car uh, in it. It scanned it, and though it didn't have an exact matching blank there uh, stored inside this key-making kiosk, uh, you, it, it scanned the key, and you can pay for it, send the uh, key image off, and I've already received my key, uh, three of them actually, three keys. I, I did it just all at once while I was there. Uh, and they work good. Uh, the only thing I need to do is I'll probably take them and put them on the uh, wire brush to kind of take off the, the, the sharp edges on them. They're so crisp and new that they kind of uh, work a, a little stodgy in some of the locks here, but that worked out well. But I, uh, keys are done, so at least maybe check one thing off the list. Uh, I am thrilled that I was able to find um, a good shop manual. Uh, Buick actually made a terrific uh, shop manual for the car. Uh, the, war the, the owner's manual was actually pretty good, but uh, I was able to go online, buy an electronic copy uh, version of the shop manual in disc form. And I have that, and I've been starting to print off certain parts of it that I want to look at. Uh, but the shop manual is, is a real do-it-yourselfer's dream because it just tells you how to do so much on the car. So very excited to have that. And, uh, but I'm going to be using this shop manual as I plan my attack and go through what I want to do with the car to make sure that we're up to speed on things. Absolutely worth uh, the money that, that I paid for it. And on top of that, I found some good sources online, Hometown Buick, give them a plug, they've uh, given me so much information as I was even trying to find the car and figure out which model I wanted and learn things about it, so uh, they, uh, you know, the research that I did online with that was a lot what got me towards uh, finding this car and uh, making me uh, more educated about the, the models that were out there. Um, probably will need to get Register with a good discussion forum online. I've been talking with my dad quite a bit too because personal contacts are fantastic, I bet. 
uh, for figuring out where to go and what to do with an older car when you got it. Uh, he's got a, a good friend who's restored car to, cars as well of this era, so I can't wait to talk to him a little bit because uh, I, I think you just can't have enough knowledge. You just can't can't learn enough about the car that you're working on, uh, and there, everything's been done before, so y you might as well go ahead and, and find those people and, and be bold and just reach out to them. Uh, probably find a, a good car show here, maybe even a Buick-specific car show, and see if I can uh, meet some people there sometime within the next year, and would be awesome to see a uh, completely fully restored car as well, probably once you see uh, an example of, of exactly what the car looked like uh, from day one, you'll you'll be smarter about finding out what you want to do with your own car. Um, I did get a lot of great information from the previous owner that I'm really thankful for. Uh, though they didn't have some of the original paperwork with it, they actually kept records of what they did with the car when they were doing their, their beginning restoration work. Uh, I'm definitely kind of picking up uh, where they left off but they actually have the records of what's been done so far um, with uh, some body work and paint and engine work. So I'll be able to use that to maybe uh, see what's been done and table some of the things, put those aside that have probably already been touched at least once um, within the last 10 years, uh, and, then, and then focus on some other stuff. Uh, I've got my trusty book going here. I'm starting to write down the things that I want to get done, and I'll just prioritize that list. That seems like the smartest way to, to tackle this. Uh, I am not going to spend um, eternity tracking down um, every original part um, to a car or holding up, uh, getting it back on the road, uh, holding out for months for uh, a, you know, an original part. Uh, this will be uh, probably, I don't, I don't want you to call it a soft resto mod. It's going to be, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace the things that are mechanically needed to make the car run great, but cosmetically don't change the car um, very much. And I think that'll also uh, help me get going faster uh, on getting this car to uh, daily driver mode, which is actually, that's my, <laughs> that's my goal for this car, is to turn it into a, a daily driver, actually. Uh, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll leave it. it. It doesn't need any more cosmetic work to it. It's a piece of rolling art, but um, mechanically to, to make sure that it drives well, stops well, starts good, uh, all those types of things. Uh, I will do whatever um, gets there uh, with the highest quality at the best price uh, for it. Um, I really would love to just start um, maybe even driving this car around right now and running it, but I've had to uh, not do that because uh, I think the wise approach uh, is to uh, do a complete and ter uh, thorough 100% going over on the car before we do that. Uh, I've only had a brief period of time to look around this car, but I can already tell that the battery has no tie down whatsoever on it. It is just sitting in the tray, so a hard turn and this large battery would go flopping over. There are suspension components, like in the back there's some shock absorber connections that uh, are not made. Oh, I, I, will, I will just find more and more, but you don't know these things until you actually start looking at it. And I, I've got to make sure uh, that we have oil pressure and coolant and that basically anything that I do starting and running around isn't going to damage things or, or, or make it worse. So cool my jets, uh, cool my heels, and, and start going through start going through the car pretty darn thoroughly. Uh, all at the same time, without letting this project uh, take over my life, don't want to make the family hate the car, uh, that's for sure. Still have to do everything else in life and give some time to everybody, but uh, uh, I can't let this completely consume me. I'll definitely be putting some money into it. Uh, that's that's what everyone says online. If you're going to go for the daily driver status, uh, expect to pay uh, more than what you thought. But that's okay, because if I can keep this within the price of a new car, uh, I think I will be well ahead, well ahead. So, uh, without talking anymore and, and, and not getting anything done, it's probably uh, time to start switching over to doing some things with the car here. Well, the good old shop manual's already giving me some good ideas and some clarity on where I'm going to go first here. So, 
Uh, I think if you go ahead and follow the entire Lubricare chart here and go through each one of these points, you can walk away feeling like you've got the car pretty well set up for uh, its best chances of being a, a, a good driver and not damaging anything. So we'll just go down these pieces one by one and uh, mark them off as we go, starting with uh, the radiator. So already I kind of like the uh, setup that I have here with this radiator. Um, I knew from the owner and in conversation with him that at some point in time this car had had overheating issues. Um, couldn't tell if they actually uh, uh, solved 100% what the issue was, but uh, they did have a, a replacement radiator put in. This radiator here uh, is 21 inches wide, uh, and the original radiator, which I still have, they gave that to me uh, when I got the car, was only 18 inches wide, uh, with a whole lot of extra <coughs> side bolt, um, you know, attachment there on the side. And I can tell from looking at the front on this one, radiator here that. Uh, the fins uh, wind up filling up the entire uh, entire space in the entire channel, so it looks like they were able to kind of shoehorn a, a bigger radiator in. And I notice it's also uh, a thicker radiator uh, in terms of its depth than the original, which I'm just fine with because uh, all over. The internet when you're working on these cars getting them to cool can be a challenge uh, a lot of times it's uh, you know sediment and things like that uh, the original radiator probably did just a fine job with cooling it when it was brand new but uh, like all systems they tend to degrade over time so it's kind of hard to reach over the car actually so the video is going to help me out let's see if we got any fluid what do we got in here I do believe we have coolant. Yeah, maybe a little low. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, top it up and try to do a little bit more inspection. There's some other interesting things going on here I can see. Uh, looks like there's been a hose delete <laughs> that's gone right there. So I'll have to sort what that went to. A replacement hose has been put on there. That's a new sticker. So here's a replacement. And I was looking around. Uh, I do not believe right now that the heater system to the interior is hooked up at all. Because uh, down right there, I don't know if it's going to show up very good. Right down there. Uh, when I trace those out, those two cutoff hoses there. They kind of come back up through this joint going into the firewall there. So I, I think we got some uh, interior heat to work through a little bit. I'll write that down to my book. But it's not leaking uh, any fluid. And I have started the car. The car did run at one point in time, get up on the trailer. And I've run it since here and I didn't see a lot of fluid coming out. So I'll just top the radiator up and we're going to call that, uh, at least for right now, good. Uh, again, that was some work that they had done on the car uh, when they were doing their restoration, so I might uh, might have caught a little bit of a break there. Well, here I am, at least under the front of the car here. Here's the passenger wheel, and uh, having been the owner of a GM 95 Caprice Classic, uh, reassuring to see that there's a lower control arms with grease zerks. Uh, three of them down here. There's uh, one on the back side of that guy. One right here. Uh, with the... Uh, oh boy, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, original, mint, pristine, uh, <laughs> grease retaining uh, rubber. That's hard as a brick, and but also flaking at the same time. And there's the uh, third one. Three, so 
Just get your wire brush here and I'll clean these up here and we'll have the lower control arms on both sides all done. That'll be six of them. It's still pretty cool. I mean this is original to, to 1950. So don't get too disheartened here. Uh, it'd be a standard job for uh, any vehicle to have to go put in new uh, grease fittings and bushings and other things like that, but we'll clean up here. We can get to these zerks here and we'll get everything. Uh, we'll get all the lower control arms all all squared up. Uh, I just can't get over. I have to keep looking uh, down, the, down this car here uh, as I find more things to do. Talk about built like a tank. Holy cow. I cannot believe how massive uh, the chassis is and the frame rails are on this car. It's like uh, skyscraper girders. Pretty stunning. And it continues all the way back. Uh, I can see how they would have uh, come right off of uh, tank assembly lines practically. <laughs> this is pretty, pretty beefy suspension work that they have here. But anyway, enough lip flapping back to grease zerk cleaning and uh, and greasing here on these lower control arms it was a tough battle I didn't know who was going to win the uh, lower control arms uh, or my grease gun uh, I had uh, I had to squeeze so hard on the grease gun it was actually uh, squirting out some of the fittings on the gun itself but eventually the uh, lower control arms did take uh, grease at all six spots Moving on to the tie rod ends, uh, each end of it, and then right in the middle of it too. So that'll probably go pretty well. Well, I'm here now looking at the uh, tie rod ends here, and if you look, look at that stripe going on the inside of the wall there. That's the uh, of the tire there. That's because that tie rod there, when the tire flexes just enough or fattens out or squashes is actually rubbing against there uh, I noticed that as I was doing that grease circ there and, and seeing where the grease was coming out and trying to get my finger behind it there just to see where it was coming out and there's not even enough room to put your finger behind there so it actually rubs against so something's going on there either it's been adjusted poorly uh, or they've swapped out another suspension part here I'm trying to make something do, or it just needs adjusted. I'm not really sure exactly what might be going on, but that's uh, that's so far out there that you just can't even uh, can't even get your your finger behind it there, and and it's rubbing against there. So good thing I'm under here looking this uh, car over, checking it out before we go tearing off down the highway. You wouldn't want that inner wall rubbing and getting hot and blowing out on you. So uh, I don't really do a lot of suspension work, so I'll have to sort out there if this is a matter of just uh, loosening this up and pulling this back in a little bit, or what the, or, you know, there's a pro and con to everything here, but that's something to be investigated a little further there, I'd say. All right, tie rod ends are at least lubricated. A little disturbing about that one rubbing against the tire, but then moving on, moving on, and that is a staring knuckle uh, bushing right there with a zerk on it. So, if you, uh, I'll get that one and the other one up front, and that'll be a good start on uh, some of the steering lubrication. And we'll call that it for the evening. <laughs> well, I think I may have caught a break actually. Oh, and as we, uh, as I look closer around, I've, uh, I think I got this figured out here. I think they got the wrong rim. I got the, they either have or a different rim or a different tire, but I'm thinking they got a different rim or different spacing on this one side over here, uh, which I'm somewhat relieved about because I really didn't want to have to try to swap out uh, arms or suspension parts, and I wondered if if something had changed if if they had put on a different suspension part. But I really the way that I feel this rim, I think we have mismatched uh, rims or improperly uh, mounted rims uh, where the the clearance is just too too close there. So. Maybe that's something we can fix relatively easy. Phew!